Hello, my name is George Aguilar. Today we're going to be discussing the troubleshooting procedures on a clay valve model 50-01 pressure relief valve. The discussion today is intended to provide a basic overview of some of the more common issues found in valves located in the field. Now each system is different with its own hydraulic characteristics and that should be taken into consideration when troubleshooting a valve. Let's get started. So first, we're gonna discuss what to look for if you think your pressure relief valve is failing to open properly. When troubleshooting a pressure relief valve, one of the first things to verify is that the valve will open at a known pressure set point. So we wanna make sure that we have an accurate pressure gauge, either on the valve uh, or one that we can mount onto the valve for testing. So before testing the operation of the CRL, there are a couple of pilot features that should be verified first. If the valve is failing to open, the first thing that we want to verify is that all the pilot isolation ball valves are open. So in this case here I have one on the inlet, one on the cover, and one on the downstream or the outlet side of the pilot system. We want to make sure that all of these are open, open, and in the fully open position. If the inlet ball valve is closed, like this one right here, if this ball valve is closed, this ball valve is connected to them. on the inlet. Our CRL is sensing inlet pressure. If this ball valve is closed, then the pilot is not going to be able to sense that inlet pressure. We want to make sure that that's open. If either the cover or the outlet ball valves are closed, so if our cover or our outlet was to be closed, even if the CRL was to open, because of an increase in pressure, the water's not going to be able to be discharged from the cover of the valve and the main valve is going to stay in the closed position. So let's make sure that all of our ball valves are open. Next we want to make sure that an X42 N2 is set to a quarter or to a half turn open. So we're going to loosen this jam nut here and we're going to completely screw in clockwise on the adjustment screw and verify that we're the correct setting on this adjustment screw. All right, so I backed that out a half turn, retighten that jam nut. If this adjustment screw is too far out, then there's not gonna be enough flow restricted through the pilot system when the CRL opens. And if that's the case, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be flooding the cover of this pilot system or flooding the cover of the main valve because not only is this our speed control but it's also our restriction fitting. So if there's if this adjustment screw is all the way out then there's no restriction of flow we would be constantly flooding the cover with our inlet pressure here. So we want to make sure that our setting on our X42 is all good. Now we're going to check the operation of the CRL pilot. Now the CRL has two body plugs One's gonna be on the inlet, one on the outlet. First, with the main valve in the closed position, we're gonna close all of the ball valves. So we're gonna do one of two things. We're gonna make sure that the main valve is closed by checking two things. One, the position indicator, which is our X101 right here. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look and make sure that that is in the closed position. If you don't have an X101, one way to verify that the main valve is closed is to close the downstream ball valve. So, once we've closed the downstream ball valve, verified that the main valve is closed, we're going to close the cover, we're also going to close the inlet. By closing these three ball valves, we've isolated the pilot system. So, if there's not a pressure gauge on the valve, the inlet CRL plug can be removed and a gauge can be installed for testing. So, in this case here, all right, there's our CRL 60, but if we were to put that right here, this one on this side is going to be our inlet plug. You can remove this body plug and you can insert a gauge assembly here. This gauge assembly is or a gauge located in this port is going to give you your inlet uh, pressure, uh, current pressure setting. So you can plug your, you can use a gauge assembly right there. Uh, once you've installed a gauge or if you already have a gauge upstream, um, again with the pilot or with all the ball valves closed, we're gonna remove the downstream body plug. So, in this case here, there's our downstream body plug, and if we put this right into play, it's this downstream plug right here. 
So once you've done that, we're going to open up our inlet ball valve. Now that you've opened up your inlet ball valve, you've brought pressure through the pilot system and to the beginning of the pilot. If the CRL remains closed, then you're not going to see any water, uh, any type of flow from this outlet port. So next, we're going to remove the cover, we're going to loosen the jam nut on the CRL, and we're going to start going counterclockwise on the CRL adjustment screw until the pilot begins to open. So you're going to make your adjustment slow, and when you begin to see water coming out of this outlet uh, port, that's going to give you the known pressure for the CRL, and it's also going to verify the operation of the CRL. So the further clockwise that you go on this CRL, or the further counterclockwise you go, the more flow that you're going to see out of this outlet port here. Once you've seen that flow, we're going to start going clockwise, which is going to increase our setting, and you're going to see that flow decrease and eventually stop as this CRL closes. So again, that's going to verify the operation of the CRL. Um, once the CRL shifts open, based on the spring range of the pilot and the known PSI per turn, the adjustment screw can be turned in clockwise again to the wanted set point. So once you've found once you have found that this is, uh, that you have your flow, you're going to go clockwise until this flow has stopped and then figure out your PSI per turn and set your CRL. If the CRL adjustment screw is backed completely out, which is counterclockwise, and your pilot still does not open and you still don't see any type of flow coming from here, then there's going to be some type of issue with the CRL pilot. And if that's the case, please refer to our maintenance and troubleshooting video of the CRL pilot. If everything in the pilot system is functioning properly and the CRL setting is below the inlet pressure, but the main valve still remains closed, then there's going to be some type of uh, obstruction within the main valve. And if that's the case, it needs to be disassembled, inspected, and cleaned. So we're going to start all over here. I'm going to open up all the ball valves. All right. And what we're going to do next is we're going to discuss what to do if a pressure relief valve fails to close. If a pressure relief valve fails to close, the first thing that you want to check is your inlet pressure. If a relief valve is going off, chances are it might be doing its job. So you want to make sure that you know what your setting is of the CRL. Check your settings of your upstream pressure and make sure that there's nothing else going on upstream to cause your relief valve to open. If you verify that there's nothing going on upstream, the first thing that you want to try to do is get the main valve to close. So in order to do that, we're going to close the outlet ball valve, which is this guy right here. We're going to close this outlet ball valve, and we're going to verify that the inlet and the cover uh, ball valves are both open. By doing this, again, if we follow the water here from the inlet, Inlet pressure has nowhere to go, ball valve's closed, water's going to back up onto the cover and close the valve. If this doesn't close the valve, then verify the position of the adjustment screw again on the X42 N2. As we mentioned before, this should be a quarter turn to a half turn out off the seat, but if it's screwed completely in, then you'd be severely restricting flow uh, of water onto the cover. So if that needle is sitting completely on the seat, then we're not making any flow past our Y strainer restriction fitting. Um, another thing that you want to check with our X42 N2 is make sure that this screen is not plugged. So by doing that, you could, uh, we have our downstream ball valves closed. We can close the cover, lock the cover, lock the inlet. We can remove this body plug here on our X42 N2 and you can open up your inlet ball valve. By opening up your inlet ball valve, you can blow out any type of debris or verify that you have flow making its way through our Y strainer. If the X42 N2 is in good condition and the outlet ball valve is closed, 
and the valve is still not going into the closed position, then there's going to be some type of, uh, most likely some type of obstruction in the main valve. And again, it'll need to be disassembled, inspected, and cleaned. If by checking these items, the main valve does close, then verify that the inlet pressure is below the setting of the CRL set point. Um, again, we just checked that functionality test of the CRL. So uh, we, we know that this is, that the CRL is in uh, operation, uh, good operation. Again, we checked that this flow coming out of the CRL was good. And put that plug back in there. Again, if the flow does not stop, then there's some type of instruction in the CRL pilot and the CRL, same as the main valve, if this flow does not stop on the CRL, again, that needs to be disassembled, inspected, and cleaned as well. If there's a continuous slow, uh, slow leak from the main valve, then there's most likely uh, a couple of likely causes. So again, we have our plug-in, our CRL, all of our ball valves are open. The 5001 is all good to go. If we find that you still have a continuous leak, either going to atmosphere um, or slowly filling a line, or if you have verified with our X101 that the valve is not in the fully closed position, um, one of the things to check is the CRL set point. If the CRL set point is very close to what your inlet pressure uh, is, then the valve will just slightly start to open up. Um, if that's the case, give it a quarter turn, a half turn uh, clockwise to completely close off that CRL. If that's the case, the CRL setting, uh, like I just mentioned, should be adjusted. Since a pressure relief valve is in, is in the closed position most of the time, the disc in both the main valve and the CRL can become worn and now allow a uh, slight leakage to occur past the seat, uh, past the disc, or the disc is making contact with the seat both in the main valve and the CRL. It's important to exercise these valves um, as often as possible because of the fact that, again, if it's, a, if it's a relief valve application, these valves are closed most of the time. Again, we recommend inspecting both discs and replacing them if necessary. That concludes some of the basic troubleshooting procedures for our clay valve model 50-01 pressure relief valve. For additional videos or literature pertaining to the model 50-01 or our CRL pilots, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.